Okay, so let's talk about planning out whole layout on your pauldron. In theory, if you knew exactly what you were doing from the very beginning, you could have planned all of this out on your template. But there are some things you don't know when you get to the stage. And there are some things that you do know at this stage. We don't want to re-flatten this and reshape it, but we're going to talk about how to get your pattern to be identical if that's what you really, 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 really want. Okay, so this is our original Pauldron Master. You want to keep this the entire time. Once you've painted it and you're wearing your armor, you can throw this template away, but you're going to want to hold on to it until the very, very end. So when we first made the, the template, we folded it in half for symmetry. And the interesting part about it is when you go to do your whole layout, you can actually decide what you think a good whole aesthetic is by just finding your lines of center and doing all that marking. Okay, but what you don't know is where these holes go relative to your template. So as you start to take your template and place it directly on the inside of your leather, you can actually see where these hole registrations are, or if you're careful, you can just take the holes in your leather and just poke right through with the Sharpie to mark where you thought they would be. And so these dots here give you an actual idea of where your hole alignment is in reality. Okay. So then we can pop out the other two Again, we're going to match up our template, like so. Making sure that our alignment is good. And then just poking on the inside of our leather so that we know what our whole spacing is. So I'm going to make those larger so you can see. And now you can ask yourself aesthetically on your template what you think looks good for whole spacing and whether or not you want to do something to make sure that these holes have some sense of symmetry as you transfer it to your final leather pattern. So for me, I always like having the perimeter relatively evenly spaced. So we've got our center, and we've got our periphery here and here. We've got where our, our pauldron lines up the way we want. And now I'm gonna show you how to subdivide this distance from here to here so that you can get an idea of what these holes are going to look like. It's okay if you just want to draw them on and eyeball it, but I find it's a little better if you um, have a plan that doesn't rely necessarily on math, but it does rely on proportions. So I'm going to take a piece of blue tape and I'm going to make it the same length from this dot to this dot, okay, like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel that tape off and I'm going to subdivide it into sections, okay? So what I'm doing right now, you can either fold it in half or you can fold it into thirds depending on what you want to do. I'm going to fold it into thirds, which can be a little tricky. There we go. Folded it into thirds. And what that'll do is it'll give me an idea of equal spacing for my rivet holes between this end point here on the pauldron and at the peak of the pauldron. So I can then take that information and just draw a little dot like so and then peel this tape back and again transfer it over onto the opposite side of the pauldron. There, and there. Peel the tape off again. Make the dots slightly larger so we can see them. And here is our relatively uniform whole spacing. Okay, so now you have the option of taking this paper and transferring it over like so, just following that perimeter. Or what you can do is you can look at what holes you've decided to put 
and you know where the peaks are, you can do that by sight. The brain's really good at that, and you can subdivide all these distances visually. But I think when you get back to this perimeter of the pauldron, you're going to find that you're still going to want to go back to your tape as the default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going around the perimeter, punching the holes I know. So we'll find the center of this peak here, like so, and wiggle. And again, center of the top peak, and wiggle. And then we'll do the other peak right here. Wiggle. So now we have three holes lined up at the top, like so. And we want to have one hole at the bottom. Again, we're trying to find the center. Wiggle. And it's a question of aesthetics. Do you want to rivet here and do you want to rivet here? I like it, so I'm going to go with the bottom of the trough and add one more rivet right in center. And if you're not sure, you can always use the tape and fold it in half to match that measurement. If you don't feel confident you found your center, that's what the tape is great for. You don't need to know how many inches it is or if it's a sixteenth of an inch or a thirty-second of an inch. You just need to know that you've got your tape, you're lining up your first dot and your second dot. Right, so we're looking somewhere in here. And what I will usually do is I'll take my punch and I'll just leave a light impression at both locations. Light impression. Very subtle. Very hard to see, but there's a light impression here and here. And then I will check to make sure that the impression here is actually on center. So you can see that this impression is inset more because I couldn't see it with the tape. And so with the punch itself, I'll find the center of my border, but I'll line it up with the placement of that dot right there. And again, we'll do that right here. So now we have our hole placements here, 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 and here. We're going to do that same transfer onto the other side. So light pressure again light pressure. So it's going to leave a small indent where you compress the leather. And that's just going to give you an idea of whether or not the hole is registered where you want it to be or somewhere else. So once you have all your holes placed the way where you want them, you can get an idea of what the aesthetic is going to look like by just taking the rivets while the posts are still present. We're not snapping anything together, but we're just inserting the whole thing to make sure that when we have our rivets in place, we are satisfied with the look and design of our pauldron. Okay. So each time we put one in, we make sure, yeah, that's where we want it. That's what we like. Oh, I like this spacing. Oh, I don't like that spacing. Um, and if you have a concern, you can ask yourself, well, what would I like to do about that? So here, this is a great example. You can see that this hole is a little closer to this hole than, than uh, the other side. So we have a larger gap here and a narrower gap here, and you have to ask yourself, do you want to go tighter on the rivets in this section to really crowd that area? Or do you want to leave it with a wider spacing? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add additional rivets here, here, and here to sort of tighten that area up. One more. That's going to give me a little more body at the tip of my pauldron, which I think aesthetically will look very nice.
And at the end of this, you're still going to have to remember where your straps go. So we've got a rivet here, and we've got a rivet here. Since we've got symmetry, we can just pull that top one out. And that's what we're looking at. So the rivets get closer and closer, and if you decide you want to match that pattern throughout the entire thing, you can. Or if you just like how it's open here, um, but then a tighter pattern down there, you can. Okay. So once you've done all this, you're still not going to do all the riveting. <laughs> we're going to paint the whole thing, and then we'll start attaching uh, components like rivets and armor plating um, or other rigid materials. But ultimately, at this point, we're ready to start painting. You just got to take all the rivets out of your design. And so you get comfortable taking your armor apart multiple times in order to get the full assembly to work right. But then save yourself the effort of trying to paint around rivet heads and making sure you're not painting your straps or your buckles because it's not going to look uniform and it's going to be really, really labor intensive. We want to be able to just lay out our material, take out the brush, and do all of our detail work fairly quickly. And then when we do the riveting, we get this really nice, clean contrast effect.